Hello and welcome to DTWG The Prep. Welcome. In today's video, we're going to be looking at solving one step equations. I have 15 questions here, which we're going to be going through. This um, you will see in your GED test, okay, because um, you know, algebra makes up quite a large percent of questions you're going to get during your GED test. Okay, before we get um, on to solving these questions, please do please subscribe to this YouTube channel and also you can check our website for solving notes and study guides. You can visit dtwgedprep.com. Okay, and you will see free summary notes, study guides, free practice questions, GED math formula sheet to download. And also um, you can join our Facebook group. We're over 22,000 members in the community and to support you, you know, if you have any questions regarding the GED in your state, whichever state, Arizona, California, Florida, you can, you know, drop your questions on the group, anything you need. Okay. We have several people who are willing to support you in your journey to achieving your GED. Okay. So, and if you require one-on-one -on -one tutoring, you can also contact me for tutoring. All right. I tutor GED, maths, RLA, social studies, and your sciences. Okay. So now getting onto this question today, it's uh, number one. Right, so these are equations, all right? Equations are when you have, uh, you know, there's always an equal to signs. That's what makes it equations, all right? When you have two things that would equate each other, all right? So here you have this, you have uh, 9x equal to 63. How do you solve this? 9x equal to 63. So you can see here, in solving equation is all about getting the value of x resolving x what would x finally be making x stand alone okay so here you can see x is attached to 9 and in what operation okay what operation is binding x to 9 you can see that this is 9 times x do you see that it's 9 times x okay so that's the operation or right? because 9 times x gives you 9x so in order to cancel out 9 here, we do the opposite, all right? The opposite of multiplication is division. So we do division. So when we divide by 9, you can see we can cancel out 9, right? But remember now, in equations, whatever you do to one part of the equation, you must do to the other part. Whatever you do to the left part of the equation, you must do to the right part. So when I divide here by 9, I should also divide here by 9. So this cancels out. I'm left with x. And what is 63 divided by 9? What would that give us? I think that would give us 8. So our answer here is what? 8x is equal to 8. So we have resolved this particular equation by solving for x. So this is the answer. Now, number 2 says what? 24 plus what? 24 plus k equal to 53. Okay? So we're looking for k, which is the variable. Now, you can see here that... As I said, K must stand alone, just like this. Now, we need to take, you know, what is connecting K with this number here? It's an addition, right? So we need to cross over. We need to take, because, you know, they are separated, right? So we need to take 24 to this side, all right? There are two ways you can do it. Some teachers do prefer to just say, subtract 24 from both sides. I am a lover of taking 24 to the other side. And why I, I say this, because it helps you further in algebra, all right? Because you should understand that when something crosses over to the other side, the sign changes, okay? So 24 here is a positive number. So this is a positive 24. When it when you take it over, when it crosses this, look, uh, you know, take this equal to sign like a bridge that changes the sign. So anything that crosses over, whether it's going from left to right or from right to left, the sign of that number will change to the opposite. So as 24, positive 24 
cut crosses to this side, it becomes negative 24. So here we're left with a positive k, which you can just leave as k, equal to 53. And 53, uh, then our 24 coming here becomes minus 24. Do you see that? So we now have to subtract. And what is 53? When we subtract uh, 24 from 53, what would that give us? That would give us a 9, then the 4, 4 minus this, that's a 29. So k is equal to 29. Now, here we have number 3 here is negative 15 equal to y minus 11. All right. So now the beautiful thing about equations is that you can now take this guy here okay or i won't want i would want my i won't want to stress myself that much so easily the the goal in solving equation is to make the variable stand alone on one part of the equation okay so i would just simply take this negative here the sign of 11 is negative all right the sign of a number is always this is always in front of it, okay? The sign of a number is always in front of it. The sign of a number is always in front of it. So the sign of 11 here is negative, negative, which is what's negative 11, okay? So we have here, we take negative 11 here. As it crosses, what does it become? It becomes a positive number. So we have here 15 is negative 15 okay don't drop the sign all right and taking negative 11 here it becomes positive 11 equal to y do you see that so here a negative 15 positive 11 what would it give us it means we're going to subtract so we're taking away 11 from 15 and that would give us what a 4 and what sign will 4 take sign it will take a negative number because this is a bigger number. So a negative equal to y. Okay. So here our answer is what? Negative 4 equal to y, which is the same as y is equal to a negative 4. So we have solved this. All right. Now for number 4, number 4 says x over 3 equal to a negative 15. Now here you can see here. Um, the operation binding x and 3 is division, okay? So to cancel out x is to do multiplication. You do the opposite. Here, the operation was what? Multiplication, and I did the opposite. So to do the opposite is I would multiply here by 3. Whatever I do to this side, I also do to this side. So I multiply here by 3. This would cancel out. Well, I'm going to be left with x and negative 15 times 3 what would that give me to give me a negative 45? All right, so we have solved this. So number five says 12a equal to 132. Okay, so this, what is binding 12 and a is multiplication just like this. So to get rid of 12, I do division. And whatsoever I do to this side, I do to the other side. So this cancels out, I have a, and 132 divided by 12 gives me what? 11. All right. Number six says what? X minus 14 equal to negative 23. All right. To get X, I take this negative 14 is, ne is a negative number here. I take negative 14 to the other side. It becomes what? Positive. So we have X equal to negative 23. Don't forget. The sign of the number always stays with it. And the sign of any number is the sign in front of it. When you don't see a sign in front of a number, just like here, 63, it means this 63 is positive. Okay? So the sign of 23 here is negative. So when I cross it over, 14, negative 14 becomes positive 14. So I have here X. All right. And what is uh, a negative 23? A positive 14. We have a negative 23, positive 14. Okay, so what do we do? We do subtraction. We have a negative and positive number, so we subtract. When we subtract, we get a 9. 
And what sign will nine take? Sign will, uh, it will take the sign of the bigger number, which is what negative. So here, x is equal to a negative nine. Now, number seven says y plus seven equal to 19. This is easy. All we need to do is take positive seven to the other side. It becomes a negative. So that will be y equal to 19. This is a positive 19. When we take it, cross it to the other side, it becomes a negative seven. So we have y is equal to, okay, when we subtract, we get a 12. So this is our answer. For number eight says here, 8c over equal to 72. So to do this, this is multiplication. So we do division. We divide both sides. It cancels. And what is 72 divided by 8? 72 divided by 8 will give us a 9. Okay. I see I made a mistake from the beginning here. A 63 divided by 9 is a 7, not an 8. Okay. All right. I missed this. Okay. So it's a 7. I've corrected myself here. All right. So here. We have a 9, and uh, what's our next number? Number 9 says what? Let's do this here. Number 9 says 15 over x equal to negative 5. All right, so this is tricky because we have x underneath, right? So what do we do? To take away, to make x, um, you know, cancel, x can't be in the denominator. It has to be in, on the numerator. So what we do, we multiply both sides by x. So we do times x we do times x. So this cancels out, we have 15 and we have negative 5x. So here now we can now find x and to find x, what we do is we divide both sides by negative five. So we divide by negative five, divide by negative five. This cancels out. We are left with x here, 15 divided by negative five gives us a negative three. So our final answer is x is equal to a negative three. Okay, uh, so we have number 10 here. Number 10 here says 18 equal to b plus 27. All right, so easy. I take 27, positive 27 here becomes what negative. So that's 18, uh, negative 27. 18 here is a positive number equal to b. So the sign that the numbers that remain where they are, they don't, the sign doesn't change. It stays. It's only numbers that move that their sign changes. Okay. So what is uh, uh, 18? Uh, you know, to, we subtract here. We have a positive 18, negative what? 27. So we need to what? Subtract. So when we subtract 18 from 27, what do we get? We get a 9. And what would the remainder, uh, the sign be? It would take a negative. Okay. So that's a negative 9 equal to B, and which is the same as B equal to a negative 9. So this is our answer. Number 11 says here, I think we have to clear the screen very soon. Number 11 says 84 equal to 7Y. To get our Y, what do we do? This, you know, what is binding them here is multiplication so we do division so we divide both sides by seven okay so when we divide both sides by seven this cancels this cancels all right and what is 84 divided by seven it's going to give us what a 12 so that's y equal to 12 which is same as y, uh 12 equal to y which is same as y equal to 12. now number 12 says here um r plus 15 equal to 7. So to get R, I take my 15 here, it becomes a negative, okay? So that's 7, negative 15. Our 7 here is positive, okay? So we have R equal to positive 7, negative 15. What do we do? It means we're subtracting. So when we subtract, what are we going to get? We're going to get 8. And what sign will 8 take? It will take a negative. So R is equal to a negative eight all right so here we have question 13 it says here 48 equal to x over 2 okay so here you can see what binds them is division so it means we'll multiply to cancel out this two so times two times two this two would cancel this two and two times 48 what would that give us that would give us uh, a that's eight that's a 96 and equal to x so 96 equal to x which is the same as x equal to 96 
Now, look at this. We have here x equal to 120 over uh, 12 equal to 120 over x. So we have 12 equal to 120 over x. What do we do? You know, we have to take out this x from the denominator. We have to bring it out to the numerator. So we multiply both sides by x, multiply by x. This x cancel this x. We're left here with 120. And 12 times x is a 12x. So here now, to get our x, we divide both sides by 12. And it gives us 120 divided by 12 is 10. So x is equal to 10. Now we have a final question here. It says 17 minus x equal to 40. So here I would do, I will take 17 to this side. So we're left with a minus x equal to 40. Uh, this uh, positive 17 comes here, it becomes negative what 17. Okay, so when we subtract, what do we have? We have uh, as three, many uh, three here, so that's two. Okay, so we have 23. Okay, so we have negative x equal to 20, positive 23. We can't stop here because x is carrying a negative. So what do we do? This negative that x is carrying is like an invisible one here. Okay, there's an invisible one. You know, when a variable stands alone, it's like, there's an invisible one with it because one times x is still x. All right. So what do we do? We divide both sides by that negative invisible one. All right. So we can cancel out that negative sign. X cannot be negative. We have to have a positive x as our final answer. Just that we have every plus, every variable is positive. Every variable, when we resolve, it's all positive. So this negative one will cancel this negative one. So we're going to have an x equal to a 23 divided by a negative one will give us a negative 23. So that's our final answer. Thank you. Thank you so much for staying to the end of this video. Do uh, make sure you follow or subscribe to this YouTube channel. You can check our website for summary notes, study guides, free practice questions at dot dtwgdprep.com. You can join our Facebook group. All links I will leave to the vid in the video description box of this video. If you are interested in tutoring, you can also contact me. I will leave my contact details there too. And finally, don't forget that Jesus Christ is coming soon. Give your life to Christ, for He is the way, He is the truth, and He is the life. He is the one who is going to lead you to heaven at last and give you that peace. That good life, long life on earth, you know, life in abundance, life in health, life in joy and peace of mind. He's going to give that to you. Please accept him today. He is good. Our God is good. Jesus is good. Everything is good in him. Lord, please embrace him today and he will take up all your yoke and give you rest. All right. Thank you. And see you in our next video. You are destined to win in your forthcoming GED test and also in life, in whichever thing you're pursuing, you are destined to win. All right, see you in our next video.